No, the title is not clickbait. I did actually use AI to make a music video that you'll see at the end of the video, but the journey really starts four months ago. Hey everyone, my name is Max and it's currently finals week for me. So I should be studying, but instead I fell down a rabbit hole of artificial intelligence a few months ago, NVIDIA released their latest Stalagan neural network called Stalagan 2 ADA. Technically the ADA isn't part of the neural network, but like whatever, they released it. The one sentence summary of it, because a lot of it goes way over my head, is that you train the model with a bunch of images, it's like a couple thousand, and the model learns how to create new images on its own, it's like original images, that look like the images you trained it on. So the researchers, and kind of like the common example that you see around, is human faces. So you train it on thousands, tens of thousands of human faces, just, you know, portrait pictures, and it learns how to create humans that look like humans, but they're not real. Some other people take a more artistic approach with it and will use it on flowers or um, paintings, minerals, things like that. And that's kind of the approach I want to take with it. My friend Ben recently created another song and I wanted to make a music video for it using this neural network. First thing I need to do is figure out what subject I want to use for my data set. So Ben and I already sat down and listened to the song to try and come up with some imagery or kind of things that stuck out from the song that we think would be good to use for the music video. Kind of the big influence that came up from it was its Eastern, sort of like Asian influence. So I started kind of looking at some older Asian artworks and I came up with two really cool ideas. So the first is traditional Chinese landscapes. So that kind of looks like these, and they're really cool. And it just so happens that as I was looking for a data set, I found out that someone had just trained Stalagan 2 on this data set and open sourced the data set too. So I'll link her whole paper in the description. Um, her name's Alice. So shout out to Alice, because that makes my life a whole lot easier. The second data set I found is um, Japanese woodblock prints. Um, they're called, I'm sorry if I um, butchered this pronunciation, um, ukiyo-e. Um, I'll have it spelled out here so you can see too. But those look like this. And this data set has like 190,000 images. So I just need to go and scrape them all and then reformat it to the size I need, 1024 by 1024 and then start training the model. It's a few days later, I kind of took a break for the weekend, but as you can see here, I've downloaded 5,049 images. It actually ended up being 5,000 because some got skipped, but here you can see the whole data set. It's uh, very big. So now what I have to do is I pretty much need to take all these images and convert them to be a square. First, I cropped the images and pretty much got rid of the like borders from when they like took the pictures and scanned the images, and that was done. Then I used this repo that pretty much just like does some easy things um, to kind of stretch it into like a square shape. And so I have two versions. I have this stretched version, which if we take a look at some of them it kind of like stretches the colors at the edges to the side. And then I also created a reflected version, which I think kind of looks even cooler. Um, kind of creates like a tiled mosaic form. And I think it really works with the way these images kind of have their borders. So I think I'm gonna start training the model on these images. So it might take a little while, um, like a few weeks to train, but I'm kind of just gonna try it and see how it goes. All right, so it's uploaded. So following this Google Collab now, pretty much I just need to convert all my images to TF records and then I can start training the model. All right, so it took a little bit of time, but it added all the images to TF records and now I'm ready to start actually training it. So I set up my configs like so and all I have to do now is run this cell so it looks like it's doing its thing so I'm gonna let it sit um, check back in a couple of hours and kind of look at the images that it's creating training it for about three hours um, it's gone through 
20,000 images so far, so really not a whole lot. <laughs> this is what the results are looking like. This is how it started off initially. So it's pretty much just images because that's like what, you know, the model was originally trained on. So that's how it starts off. Then um, next, like this, um, pretty much no difference. Then we have it looking like this. So you can start seeing almost like textures coming in or here like his face is gone here like it's some um, really creepy things but something that's kind of cool that's coming out is like wavy like hair loops i guess or like hair textures i don't know it's bizarre and then this is the latest image to come out so far after three hours of training and like this is straight out of nightmares this is terrifying same with like this i don't know these things are kind of crazy What's interesting is like up here, you can kind of see like the blues and the reds come in from the background. And that's kind of something that's consistent throughout all of the data set or like here too and here. So pretty good preliminary results. We need the faces to kind of disappear, but uh, yeah. So it's been probably going for about 28 hours at this point. And so what happened is for the augs, um, you see at first I used BGC and the issue with that is that the C augment was kind of messing with the colors So all of these were like teal tinted and then these were like red tinted, which is cool But it's not really what I want. So I listened to the artificial images David Schultz his advice and I just did BG and it actually was able to train it out of it So like I said at the end of the 14 hours, it's looking like this instead so this is after 28 total hours and learn how to create faces, but there's some model collapse. So it's like the same face. It's learning how to recreate in like every picture, but I think it'll train itself out of it after a few more days, or like a week of training. So we'll see. And then we also have the like reflected version training and this is looking pretty good. It doesn't really know how to make faces. Like it's getting close, but again, the same model collapse, it's kind of learning the same face. But I think the abstract stuff, like this one, is looking pretty cool. This one I really like in the middle. So far, so good. Um, need to train it a lot more. It's now Monday, a week after I first started training. And I'm now up to training three versions. Um, so I started training this Chinese model from the data set um, I found online already. It's looking pretty cool. Um, some of these, like this one, I think it's looking pretty cool. Um, and then the other two are just the same ones. This one where it's like stretched edges and the other one it's reflected. Issue I'm running into now is, I'm surprised it took this long, honestly. I mean, I didn't know there were limits, but if I tried to reconnect, pretty much it tells me I hit my GPU limit. So I can't say I can complain um, considering how cheap Collab Pro is but it is unfortunate so i'm kind of stuck for a while <laughs> which is you know fun present max here again so i finished slowly training the model using only one google collab session open at a time to keep collab happy and to stop getting the air and then i used the model to generate the final videos and clips that I used in the music video I stopped recording myself around this time because I actually got sick and ended up in the hospital. So I obviously <laughs> did not want to be filming myself. But um, the collab notebooks I use, there's two of them to create the sound reactive clips. And I'll have the links to them down in the description. And then I took these clips, I brought them all into DaVinci Resolve, figured out which ones I wanted to use in which parts of the songs, add some layering, and then here we go. This is the final music video. I hope you guys like it. And I'll see you guys next time.